South Africa is expected to release details of its COVID-19 vaccine trials in January. The massive global rollout of an effective vaccine can help curb the COVID-19 pandemic in a short space of time. The health department hasn't released details yet of its plans to roll out the vaccine across the country. Head of the Health Justice Initiative, Fatima Hassan, is calling on government to negotiate with the drug companies for voluntary licenses, the transfer of technology and fair prices so that everyone will be able to access the vaccine. She joins us now to discuss this further. Fatima, many thanks for your time this afternoon. Let's perhaps start with the people that would be expected to get this vaccine in the UK and other parts of the world, we're seeing it start with the elderly coming into South Africa. What engagements are you having with people in terms of those that would be able to access it first? Yeah, so thanks for having me on the show. I think the, the question over these Christmas holidays really is the government to take the public into their confidence to share with us the different plans and different scenarios for how we'll be able to access vaccines like, you know, the rest of the world is accessing at the moment, like in the U.S. and in the U.K., and then also how that will be distributed equitably across both our public and private sectors, given that, as you know, there's some severe limitations with the COVAX uh, facility which is only expecting to assist low- and middle-income countries with up to 20 percent uh, dosages for populations in those countries by the end of 2021. So there's definitely a need in addition to, you know, accessing dosages from the COVID facility. And as yet, we don't know which vaccine, at what price, uh, which drug company we'll be dealing with, to be also having conversations with some of the front runners uh, for those vaccine candidates that are currently being administered and those that are considered safe and effective. Um, Fatima, are you still with us? I am, yeah. So, so if those vaccines are considered safe and effective, one would expect that government over the holidays would be already negotiating with these drug companies for, uh, you know, the, the right to be able to manufacture those vaccines, which would entail a transfer of technology. Alternatively, for those vaccines to be provided to large percentage of our population in South Africa and the rest of Africa at a fair price. What would those challenges be, Fatima, when negotiating with these companies if government had to go to them and ask for these voluntary licenses and the fair prices that you talk about? What would inhibit those companies uh, from uh, creating that compromise with government so that all South Africans uh, have access to this vital vaccine? So I think there are several challenges, and we saw that with the HIV-AIDS crisis as well. Ordinarily, drug companies are very resistant to share technology or to make the, the, the true cost of producing a particular drug or a, or a vaccine actually public and make that information transparent. Um, so we've had difficulties, for example, with, with HIV and AIDS and with ARVs where companies were approached and refused. Um, to actually share the technology and to make, you know, particular vaccines or particular medicines available at a, at a lower price. I think the, the tricky part here is that the South African government in a catch-22 because you're trying to access vaccines from the COVAX facility and you're trying to access limited supplies because there's global shortages and there's a scarcity from, you know, a handful of companies. So the situation that they're facing is, do you force the drug company's hands, which our law actually allows us to, our constitution allows us, international law through what's called TRIPS and, and through the rules of the World Trade Organization actually enables the country in a public health crisis. And as you know, we're facing an emergency. Our country is being devastated as we speak. So, you know, there's, there's certainly going to be opposition. We're seeing that already in Geneva, where the South African and Indian governments are co-leading on a proposal to actually offer a waiver from certain TRIPS provisions to make it easier for the developing world to be able to manufacture and to be able to distribute and to be able to access some of these vaccines during this pandemic. And wealthier countries are already blocking them at that point. Um, so it certainly won't be easy, but I think that with the public behind government and the support of, you know, the healthcare workers and people who are at the front line who are saying, who are pleading with us that we need to get more supplies of potentially uh, vaccines that could take us out of this epidemic, then I, then I think that government um, is in a 
is in a stronger position, perhaps, than we were, uh, you know, earlier, uh, about two decades ago. Right, and of course, Fatima, all the things that you've just mentioned speak to this um, a COVID monopolies that can be created uh, in the manufacturing and the distribution of this vaccine. Yeah, so, you know, the, the situation is such that if you only have one or two vaccines that are actually considered safe and effective and that can be rolled out immediately, then you're only negotiating with one or two companies. So unless they give you permission for a generic version to be manufactured so that you can scale up production around the world, and there are companies that are able to manufacture the, the type of vaccine that's called the mRNA vaccine. Um, so there's certainly, you know, organizations like MSF are saying that if the, if the right vaccine is chosen and if that is considered safe and effective, there is definitely the ability of companies in the developing world to be able to scale up and manufacture that because, you know, the reason why COVAX has limited dosages is because obviously there's been pre-purchases of a lot of those dosages by the wealthier countries, but but also if you limit the number of companies that can actually make that vaccine, you're obviously going to have limited supplies in 2021. So if, you know, the, the estimates uh, from this week are that 10 billion dosages have already been reserved, mostly for higher income countries. So your ability then to catch up is, you know, is, is severely at risk. Um, and, and that is why we're saying that something has actually got to change in a very expeditious way. I've written before that this could be the redeeming moment for our government. It did not issue compulsory licenses during the HIV AIDS crisis when it should have. And we lost a lot of people prematurely and unnecessarily. We certainly don't want to have a repeat of that with COVID-19. Mm. Head of the Health Justice Initiative, Fatima Hassan, giving us insights on the vaccine for COVID-19 and the accessibility here in South Africa.